everyone. Welcome to News Now, the Belmont Journal's daily update on what's going on in the community of Belmont. I'm your host, Roger Colton. I have with me today Ellen Gittleman, who is the Executive Director of Belmont World Film. Ellen, thanks for joining us. The Spring International Film Festival is almost upon us. Can you tell us what's happening and when? Sure, yeah. So, um, you know, we're happy. This is our first virtual edition of our 19th annual International Film Series. And it's actually, so it starts on March 16th, but we won't actually be seeing anybody until March 22nd. So our first film, uh, which is called Lunana, A Yak in the Classroom, uh, which is one of this year's uh, submissions for Best International Feature Film, is our opening film. And that will play for seven days. And on Monday, March 22nd, we are fortunate to have the film's director participate in a live Q&A with us at 7.30 p.m. on Zoom. Of course, you have to have watched the film to be able to participate in that. In that. And then we have uh, seven more films, uh, all but one film playing for a week each. One film is only playing for three days. Um, and then with the same, same uh, uh, schedule, each discussion will take place on a Monday at 7.30 p.m. Uh, through May 10th. So there are eight films in total. They'll play for each play for uh, a week apiece? Yes, that's right. Well, except for one film. Uh, it's called Which The Sun. Which is a three-day film. Yes, just through 72 hours, 74 hours, in fact. Yes. And can you give us an idea of uh, what you're looking at this year? Sure. So thank you for asking. So as I mentioned, we have Lunana Ayak in the Classroom, which is from Bhutan. And the next week, uh, we are showing one of the films that is actually shortlisted for the Best International Feature Film. And it's by Agnieszka Holland, who uh, was a nominee for the film Europa Europa. Uh, I'm sure you may have uh, remember her. Uh, and her, the film is called Charlatan. And it's actually from the Czech Republic, even though she's a Polish. It's because she did her she studied film in the Czech Republic, and she bases most of her films in the Czech Republic. The week after that is, uh, a, is a film called The Sun, and A Sun, and that's the one that's being screened for just three days. And um, that is, takes place in Tunisia. Uh, fascinating film, it's not what you expect. It's uh, about a, a middle class, upper middle class family in Tunisia, very westernized and uh, uh, very, surprising experience comes upon them. Uh, another film this year is uh, uh, the, uh, 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 well, we have the week after that actually is a surprise film. Uh, we haven't announced it yet because it's so new that we weren't allowed to actually announce it, but I can tell you it's going to be a real eye opener. And, and then the week after that is a film that we were supposed to show last year called The Dazzled. And if you saw yesterday's Boston Globe, or if you are a devotee of uh, international films, TV series on Netflix, you probably know the uh, show uh, uh, Call My Agent, it's French. And in the Boston Globe yesterday, actually, there was a, an article about, uh, about uh, these, uh, these TV shows from other countries. And this character right here, is the star of the film The Dazzled, which we are showing um, that's going to be screening from April 13th through the 19th. Uh, the, weekend, the week after that, we have another Oscar nominee. Uh, um, it's actually was around, uh, it was around submission and it's actually shortlisted for the best international feature film. Um, and it's by uh, Oscar nominee Majid Majidi who made the film Children of Paradise. Um, I know a lot of people in our audience are very fond of that film. Um, it's an amazing film, um, just incredible. And he used to his theme of uh, child labor issues, uh, especially in, in that part of the world, Iran. Um, and the week and when, yes. when you talk about these films, uh, the, the World Film Festival has decided to stay virtual uh, this Correct. spring. That's right. Can you explain That's right. to people how they would uh, participate? Yes. So um, as I mentioned, uh, well, each film will be available to watch online for an entire week. 
starting on a Tuesday at 12.01 a.m. That way, if you're a night owl, you can start watching first thing uh, on, on a Tuesday. And then it will uh, be available for screening until Monday, the following Monday at 9 p.m. But once you um, decide to watch a film, you'll actually have 48 hours in which to watch it. So if you if you start a film on at 8.59 on a Monday night, you can actually watch it through Wednesday, that Wednesday. Um, and uh, the uh, each week culminates in a discussion on Monday evenings, either moderated by a professional or an expert on the subject in the film, or, and it's the case with the opening film, the actual director, him or herself, will be discussing the film with our audience members. And it's really easy to access the films. Uh, we have a, you just click on the film that you want to watch, you get, um, you pay for it, and then you, um, you, you're you able to watch it immediately, or you can postpone watching it to when it's convenient for you. And um, uh, it's, uh, it's a fairly easy, straightforward thing. And obviously when we have the Zoom discussions, that's pretty easy as well. We're on Zoom now. The, uh, uh, the people who might want to watch a film can choose either to subscribe, if you will, to an individual film or subscribe to the series as a whole. Is that correct? Yes, yes, you can, uh, as a matter of fact. So uh, you can either choose the films you want to watch, but if you plan on watching more than five films, we recommend that you buy a passport, with uh, passport in quotation marks, uh, and that provides admission to all eight films for $85. And that's actually a savings of $3.37 a film. So that's a really good um, way to see it. And of course, if you become a member of Belmont World Film, you also receive um, free tickets or passports as well. So um, all that information is on our website. Now, Ellen, it, you mentioned this is the 19th year for the World Film Festival. Uh, well, how does uh, how does that? It's feel? the 20th year, or the 20th? Okay. Because last year we had to cancel two days before it was supposed of to start. Yes. So it's a really our 20th year, but it's our 19th series. The 19th season. Mm -hmm. And has the the festival changed uh, over the years, or oh other yeah, than the, the particular films that you uh, that you show. Uh, absolutely. Well, I mean, it's how it's gone through very various permutations. Um, but uh, we've we've had this this format for oh, probably the last five or six years at least, uh, maybe more. But um, eight films in this in the spring, and then uh, in June we've been observing World Refugee Month for uh, probably the last three years. So that's. So our, you know, we we pretty much stabilize with the the, the series in the spring, uh, World Refugee Month in June, and our family festival in January. So that's, and we also have some special events throughout the year. But the series itself, um, yes, it's it's definitely evolved. We now we used to have when we met in person, opening and closing film um, dinners that corresponded to the culture represented in the film, um, and. Uh, so that's something that's uh, part of our tradition now as well. But we're hoping to do some sort of dinner and a movie uh, program with some area restaurants, but we're in the process of working that out right now. What does the World Film, uh, uh, Belmont World Film look for when you are deciding on which films to screen? Well, that is a, a really good question. I have, rule number one has to be a good story. And... Um, but I mean, well, maybe tied for, for first places. It has to be a good story and has to be about another culture, something where we can appreciate or learn to understand another culture, uh, how they're the same and how they're different from how we are. And, uh, you know, there has to be some sort of growth uh, in the film. It has to be a good story. It can't be about special effects, which most of most films from around the world are not about special effects. It, it is a long story telling tradition uh, in other countries. My impression is that Belmont World Film started as a very local event and it's becoming more and more a regional event. It, it hasn't been it hasn't been regional. 
for a long time. I mean, it's it started out regional, but we always had people from other towns. And um, so it wasn't just Belmont. I don't think there were enough people in Belmont to make it just a Belmont event. Although this year we have our, our sponsors are all Belmont based, ironically, uh, with the Belmont Cultural Council and the Belmont Food Collaborative are both sponsors this year. So, um, but yes, it's definitely regional. We draw even from New Hampshire and Rhode Island now. That's great. Well, the International Film Festival starting on March 16th and going through May 10th uh, is uh, showing or screening eight different international films in 2021. Thanks right. for joining us, Ellen. I want to say speaking. one more. Oh, I want to sure. say one more thing. If you, uh, so you asked what the other thing we look for in our films is it it can't the film can't have played anywhere else. We really look for the um, for something that and a gem that that you won't be able to see anywhere else. So sorry for interrupting you. <laughs> We've been speaking with Ellen Gettleman, who is the executive director of Belmont World Film. You've been watching News Now, the Belmont Journal's daily update on what's going on in the community of Belmont. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Roger Colton. I'll talk with you again next time.